Tales by Moonlight, Reloaded, powered by Storytellers Orbit Limited. Day Outcast, Episode 1. The starless sky stretched over Umudo village like a vast blanket of Stagian darkness. An owl hooted in the distance and chirped to the air. A flash of lightning poured through the sky, followed by the distant rumbling of thunder. The young man stared in his sleep, and that was when he heard the sound, the voice. It came to him slowly at first. Then it was as though the voice was in his head. It was the same voice, the melodious voice. It belonged to the girl in his dream, the beautiful faceless girl. She tried to remember her features. It was impossible. The calling voice came to him in earnest now, jolting him fully awake. She was singing, calling out to him. Come to me, Akweze. Let's dance the night away. You and I, like lovebirds, are stray. Only we are not, my Akweze. Tonight, we are young lovebirds, soaring away. Akweze opened the door of his mud house slowly and peered out, and there she was, his queen, his love, in person. Like the moon, she radiated an unusual brilliance, momentarily blinding him. Her arms were outstretched, calling him. He obliged. Their hands touched. It was like nothing he had ever felt in his life. Smooth and inviting. She smiled. A distant rumbling came again. Lightning struck the starless sky. That was when he saw her face. The bloodied face. The long canine teeth dripping blood. The talons the blood red eyes. He opened his mouth to scream. The movement was too quick like a sleigh. The canine teeth buried themselves in his neck, ripping his jugular veins. He convulsed helplessly and went limp. As he felt his life drain out of him, she let him drop to the ground in a heap. Then she sighed contentedly. The revenge mission had just begun. She had come back from the dead for a purpose. There was no turning back now. Sleep eluded Eze Obudibu, the sovereign king of Umudo village. He lay awake staring into emptiness. Clouded thoughts wrestled each other in his mind, and his heart was a flurry of wild beats. The king beat his lower lip, stood up and paced his chamber. How could this be? he thought, unable to grasp the predicament that befell his kingdom. People and animals dying mysteriously. The dr rivers drying up. Plants and trees wilting and dying. The rains had stopped falling suddenly. Now his sacred staff of authority had gone missing. Disappeared overnight like a whiff of smoke and the sacrifice had been made. Yet, Namani had refused to come back home. Was he still in shock? Had he suspected him? 
Had he given up the throne because of a dead woman? And Oyemechi's daughter, his brother's daughter, where had she disappeared to? So many questions and thoughts ran through the king's mind. He found himself thinking about how it had all started. The ancestral lineage is polluted. The sacred staff cannot exist in a place of sacrilege. Ogugu, the chief priest's baritone voice, had echoed. The king furrowed his brows. Ezemu, you speak in riddles. What exactly do you mean? Ogugu regarded the king as would a confused mouse regard a cat. Our forefathers say that a bird does not defile its own nest. Your son Namani has desecrated the land. And Osu carries his child. Preparation must be made to appease the gods, or we should expect the bloodbath. It was a taboo for Uma Diala, a freeborn, to intermingle with an Osu, an outcast. That was a well-known rule, a law of Umodo kingdom. Father, I love her. She's carrying my child, your grandchild, Namani said, a note of indignation in his voice. His words filled the king with horror. He was the king's only son. The king had waited 30 years for a male child. His five wives had all borne him girls, and in a desperate quest to have an heir to his throne, he had married a sixth wife who finally gave him a son. Namani, the only son, became the most favored of all the king's children. He had all he wanted and did whatever he pleased, but this time around he had gone too far. His defiance threatened the peace of the kingdom.